So happy new year, folks. How we doing? Are you having a good year? So I won't keep you very long. Last year, we had a good year, I believe. The theme was heaven's release. And it was, I must say, it is nothing like I expected. I was expecting to see different things than I've seen. But what truly captivated me is the Lord, I believe, was just revealing new things to us. And washing away maybe some old teachings, some old thought processes, some old ideas, and really bringing in something new, especially uh, concerning sonship and his beauty and his radiance. And honestly, I'm just in awe of the journey that he's brought us over the last six months, especially. And I'm excited to see what he is about ready to do. But it seemed like last year was a a year of release of revelation, unsettling, uprooting of fouled belief systems. That's what I noticed anyway. And as I've been seeking him on this upcoming year, he put some interesting words in my mind. The words were outpouring, flow, kings and priests, governmental, legislation, and the ecclesia. And as I sat there and pondered these words, number one, they didn't really connect. It didn't seem like there was, it was just random words. It's like, Lord, what are you saying? To the point where I was going to type up these words and give them to a few people and say, pray, See see what the Lord says. But then he took me to one verse, 2 Corinthians 3.18. I just read that a little bit ago. But we all, with unveiled face, behold, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And whenever he gave me that, it's like, oh, okay, I see it all very clearly now. We all with unveiled faces. Question, do you have an unveiled face this morning? Let me ask a different question then. Do you believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your Lord and personal Savior and has he redeemed you? Guess what? You have an unveiled unveiled face. Did you know that? Because in 2 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Nevertheless, When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So it is not a process. It is an instant thing whenever we submit to Jesus. But with unveiled faces, this means face to face, we are able to look at him and he us. Removal of the walls and barriers that once was. This is the removal of uh, of the veil from our face. He is wanting us fully exposed before him as he is before us. No hindrances, no obstacles, no excuses, just pure and simple exposure. This is what the the Father desires of us. Search me, O God, and know my heart, and test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. This is a place of honesty, openness, and vulnerability. Because as we stand before the Lord, it's going to take some strength, possibly. We have to be vulnerable, and we have to trust him. Whenever we say those those words, search me, O Lord. Sometimes that is a very hard phrase to say, is it not? Because sometimes he might pull up some stuff that might not be too pleasant. But beholding, beholding him face to face, and we we, we say this quite a bit, to gaze upon is what beholding means. I believe it was even mentioned uh, during worship, but how often have we talked about gazing at the Lord, looking at him face to face, eye to eye? We say that phrase, right? 
But what does it mean? It's not like he is right here. Can I pick on you? It's not like he is right here and we can literally look at him in the eyes, right? But we've said that quite a few times, right? Beholding him, keeping our eyes fixed upon him. But we can't physically see him. So what does that mean in worship? What does it mean? What does it look like to fix and to gaze our eyes upon him? I believe within every man and woman... There is something within us that has an imagination to capture the face of the Father. And as we gaze upon him, it it is us in our imagination gazing upon the beauty of the Lord. And through that, yes, he can can literally make his face visible for us, to us. But it's an imagination. It is a desire. Lord, give, give me a glimpse of your beauty. Give me a glimpse of your eyes. And that is gazing upon him. And it, it, it is an awareness that he is ever so present. And he is as close as a friend. Hence the word gazing. That's what we're talking about, gazing. He, that, that understanding, that revelation. Yes, he is as close as a friend and I can view him even though I can't see him with these eyes. I can see him with the eyes of my heart. And that is gazing upon him as we continue on. That make a little bit more sense? No? But we, we're always talking about gazing upon the Lord and I thought, well... We talk about it, but have we explained it? Do you have an imagination of the Lord and his beauty and his splendor? Have you ever seen him face to face, literally? But have you seen him? Absolutely. How did you see him? Through imagination, visualization, right? I think he gives you glimpses. He does give us glimpses says if we search for him, we will find him when we search for him with all of our heart. But as we behold, to gaze, observe, to look intently upon, focused, not distracted, but a singular, limited vision, can we tune everything out with a limited vision and only glance at him? As in a mirror, The reflective surface which reflects a clear image. As we look into the reflection of his eyes, we will see ourselves. But what does the Lord see? You ever get up so close to someone or that you can almost see your reflection in their eyes? That's to gaze intently upon them. For the Lord does not see things as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord's looking at our hearts. It says, you are precious and honored in my sight because I love you. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. So as we're gazing upon him, as we're looking into his eyes, we are seeing our inward parts if we're looking intently. And we are also seeing how precious we are in his sight And his eyes are upon the righteous. Are there any righteous in here? Why? Because of Jesus. When God looks at you, he doesn't judge, esteem, and measure you according to your imperfections. Thank God. He sees you in the beloved. He sees you in Christ. And he sees the blood that has been shed for you, covering you. Looking into his eyes, intently focused, we will see ourselves changed into the image that we behold, which is who the Father has ordained the, his beloved sons of righteousness. As we gaze at him, we will see his glory. Glory means his magnificence, great beauty and splendor. And then it says we will be transformed to change in composition and structure, to change in character or condition. Another word, 
don't get all sideways on this word, but transfigured. It means to be transformed into something more beautiful or elevated, to change so as to glorify and exalt. Don't get all sideways on me, but what has the Lord been trying to uh, show us? The revelation of sons. He's saying, come up here, come up here, be seated with me, know where you are. This is who you are. I don't want you walking here, but I want to elevate you to another stance, another place. Okay, we didn't get sideways, did we? All right. But to be transformed into the same image, resembling in every relevant respect. Wow. Corresponding so closely to him that we are almost indistinguishable. Uh, his exact likeness, his representation, just like the firstborn of the brethren, Jesus. But whatever we behold, we will become. This is why it is absolutely so imperative to guard jealousy, jealously the openings of our, our being our ears, eyes, and all of our senses. Whatever we behold, we will become. That's why we guard our ears and our eyes and our hearts as to not absorb anything that would uh, work against the working of the Holy Spirits within us. You start listening to gossip, guess what? You're going to be a gossiper. If you start looking at foul things, guess what? Foulness will start entering your life. No? (laughs) If we behold chaos and confusion, our lives will display it. If we behold desires of the world and this flesh, that will overtake us. If we harbor bitterness, everything will taste bitter to us. But if we behold beauty, gratitude, and grace... This is what will sprout out of our lives. If we gaze and behold the reflective surface of the consuming eyes of the Father, we will, ca- we will watch within his eyes our very transformation. That's why he's saying, look at me, look at me, because if you look at me, what you're going to notice within yourself is your life is going to start transforming and changing, and you're going to start becoming my very image. You will truly understand and walk as my sons, because you are gazing upon me, and you cannot gaze upon me without change coming into your life. Moving from a glory to a latter glory. From glory to glory is a promotion, an advancement, an elevation from one level into another level. And this is what the Lord desires for each one of us. An advancement, an elevation, a destination from glory to an exceeding glory. The elevated sons of righteousness. But we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Because of Jesus, the veil and wall of separation was removed from our eyes, And we are now able to gaze and intently look upon the beauty, grace, and majesty of our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we behold and intently gaze upon the reflective surface of his eyes as a mirror, a clear image will appear. (laughs) Things change. The fog comes off of our eyes. We see things a little bit different because a clear image is emerging. This image will be his glory displaying his magnificence, great beauty, and splendor. 
As we gaze upon this image, we will start to be transformed to change into the new character and condition, into a new image, the same image that we are beholding. The same image resembling in every relevant aspect. His exact likeness, visible visible representation. All right, what does any of this have anything to do with anything? Well, he's been giving us an awful lot of revelation of who we are called to be in him. And he threw up some weird words, like I said, outpouring flow, kings and priests, governmental, Legislation and ecclesia, ecclesia, the church rising. It's like, okay. But I see a twofold unveiling this year. Number one, we know he wants to unveil himself right before our very eyes and show us his beauty and splendor in tangible ways. I want to see his Shekinah glory fall upon us his might, his power. I want to see the very fire of his Holy Spirit consume this house. And as we ask for him to unravel himself before our very eyes, he is wanting us to be unraveled, not only before his very eyes, but before all of creation. Because creation is groaning for us to walk with unveiled faces, beholding his glory, walking in his glory. With the continued unveiling of the beauty and majesty of our Father our de- and our destiny as sons of God, that the Holy Spirit has been unraveling before us, a natural and organic perpetual flow will start to come forth to the surface that will release a mighty inpouring and outpouring. With this flow will come a governmental shift in the atmosphere that will be seen and heard in our community. He is raising up kings and priests in this house. And whenever he showed me this, I don't, I I, I got a few inclinations. But no one is excluded from this. He is raising up kings and priests in this house that will walk under the legislation and authority of the courts of heaven. Those that have released everything in order to gain the one thing. Those that are willing to gaze into his eyes of fire and be consumed. Those with one singular focus. Eyes for no other than his beauty. Hearts for no other than his beauty. Those that are willing to stand in the fire and say, consume me, Lord. And his holy fire will come upon any willing vessel that will stand in his consuming fire. And he will ignite you in such a way that you will go forth this year, not next year, not the following year, but this year walking in your full power and authority that he has given you as the sons of God. For any of us, any of us, there are no exclusions other than the willingness to say, Lord, consume me and fill me up with your holy fire. There are some that's going to change atmospheres setting in here right now. But it's available to every single one of us. It just depends on where our eyes are focused. He doesn't want a little bit of focus. This is the catch. He wants us consumed with him day in and day out. Every breath that we take, we are looking toward him. We are adoring him. We, we are captivated by him. That's the cost.
I see many veils being removed this coming year. I see freedom and liberty coming like wave upon wave, beating on the rocky shoreline until only sand remains. I see heaping piles of chains that have no captives, no longer binding, only rusting on the ground. Word says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his step. The Lord is establishing our steps. He has been. And he is delighted that we are responding to his voice. The Father has us exactly where he wants us to be. And he is saying this day, stay the course, church. Do not move or waver to the right or the left. Just continue upon the river that I have set before you. You are in my flow. You are on my path. But he's saying, don't waver. Don't move right. Do not move left. Do not move ahead of him and do not lag behind. Heavily in my spirit. You may be thinking, well, things are moving slow. Let them move slow. Relax. Be encouraged. Be of good cheer. Gaze, gaze, gaze. He is establishing his authority and dominion and government in this house. Our duty is to gaze. But the curious words, words, Government, legislation, the ecclesia, outpouring, kings and priests. It's like, are these crazy words? Is this accurate? Is it? Then a funny thing happened this morning while we were up in prayer. Someone started talking about government. Rose, can you please come share what was on your heart this morning? This is Rose Church. This is a confirmation from the Lord. Okay, this morning um, I was listening to a podcast. And um, the person that was speaking just gave this scripture. And I, I was like, oh, I was just listening. And I thought, wait a minute. You know, you get that moment something catches you in the heart, stop. Let it catch you. Let it grab a hold of you. Um, what, this is what caught me. It's Isaiah 9, 7. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. I got it. I don't know about you guys, but I sure sit on that word peace a lot. And God said, what about my government? What about my government? Have you ever questioned that? Every nation in this world has a government. And every government has structure. Now we can look for that in the Bible. We can see that structure. Um, But what he's pulling from there for me personally, and hopefully for you guys, to really pay attention, it's his government that we have a right to if we're willing to step into. Okay. The other thing that caught me was um, there's so many believers in the body of Christ that truly love the Lord. They follow the Lord. They want the Lord. They're hungry for the Lord, yet they believe in abortion. What does his government have to say about it? I believe he's asking us to speak out and remind people, not to be in their face, but to say, have you ever thought about what his government says about that? Now that's his word. Well, often we're, we're saying, have you thought about his word? I believe he wants us to say another one also. Have you thought about his government? His government is so powerful. So we'll go back to one other piece of the scripture here. This is what his government does. He has shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressed. 
He's done that, but he's waiting for us to step into the government. Speak it and do it. That's called deliverance. That's called healing the sick. These are the gifts that he's given us to do and be active in. It's his government. He says, step up to it. Okay, we look at the borders right now. What a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. Actually, there's so much in the government that looks like a mess. And he says, so how do you like the feeling? Come up with me. So we come up with him. And we say, now what? Learn how to come into my war room and take action and be a part of changing your government down here. Because I can do it with you, but I won't do it by myself. I need you with me. So when you look at the, a war room, which we've heard and we read books and all those things, it doesn't just happen like that. There's a lot of structure to it. There's a lot of people that have been put in place, that have trained up, that are working towards what God wants. We have the intercessors that stand in the gap over and over and over, that stand in that war room and go to their knees. We have those that know the position of the next fight because they've, the, they've studied the enemy. There's nothing wrong with studying the enemy. Don't just get fixated on them, but study them. We're in a war, and God says, come up to my government, come into my war room. Yeah, you might get bloody. More than likely, you will. But in that, you will find the strength to fight the next fight. But I won't take you if you don't want to go. But for this body here, we want. We want to go. And Father God, I thank you. I thank you for Pastor John um, stepping into the role that you've given him, Lord God, to pastor us, to be the leader of that portion, Lord God, that you have given him. But you've given this body of Christ, many of us, many of us strategies for where God wants to take you. Do not fear that. Learn about it, get other people to come alongside, but it's time to step up to the government that he said. Father God, I thank you and I praise you that uh, you're going to give us the ability to um, break the yoke. You said it can be done, but you'll use us. So the breaking of the yoke of addiction, pornography, we can step into that war room and we can go after that thing. Put on your armor. It's a war. And Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your government. Oh my goodness. It is not lost upon me that I will find more peace with your government than I will ever find here in the United States of America. So when I'm feeling weak and I've been watching too much news, listening to too much that's out there, remind me to lift my head up, to gaze upon your government and trust that you will speak to us. You will lead us if we are willing. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. I just thought it was beautiful whenever she came into prayer and just started talking about this. It's like this is it. The Lord is raising us up to shift the atmospheres in our city and this nation around the world. All we have to do is just like Rose said is step up and he is calling us up higher deeper further within 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 him will we say yes will we gaze upon him if we're not gazing upon him scratch everything that's been said everything everything we've talked about over the last year scratch it all throw it all in the garbage it all starts with us fixing our eyes upon our father that's where our strength, our power, and our authority comes from. Outside of him and gazing upon him, it's all void. So will we rise, church? Yes. 2024, unveiling. Let him unveil us before all of creation so that creation sees the sons of God rising up.